Hi guys and welcome to this video. Um, really excited to be doing a 14 day challenge as a massive thank you to you guys for supporting me uh, on here on YouTube and anywhere else where you support me. So thank you. Um, today's day one and I figured for day one I wanted to uh, do a quick uh, 30 minute uh, I'd say practice, it's not gonna be very flowy like my, like my typical classes, but we're gonna focus on our core. So it's gonna be some of my favorite core exercises um, that you can obviously repeat whenever you want to. And I think it's really important because um, our core is incorporated in almost every single movement of the body. And interestingly enough, as we move through our yoga practice, um, it's such an important part of our practice because it's incorporated in everything that we do, but so many of us have weak cores and it's expected that our core be strong in our practice, but there's not a lot that we do um, to really build that strength. So having complementary uh, workouts to improve your practice is incredibly valuable. So I hope this is useful. And just to give you guys a little bit of background, if you're into, um, sort of more of the anatomy of the body. More often than not, you'll hear teachers, uh, especially your yoga and Pilates teachers, talk about your TVA. Um, I always mention it, so your transverse abdominals as sort of the corset that, that wraps around and keeps everything nice and, and flat and in and tight. Um, and these are probably your most important core muscles. They are the ones that are closest to your spine, to your organs. And when we're doing our exercises, by engaging the TVA, we are hugging kind of the organs and, and protecting our spine, which allows us to maintain stability um, as we do our, our, our exercises. And definitely it provides incredible support for our back. So if you're like me and you've struggled with back pain in the past, um, really pay attention to, to hugging that tummy in as you do your exercises, especially in crunch type movements or when you're holding your plank. Um, just be really conscious of not pushing the belly outwards, but instead we're trying to uh, wrap it all in. So let's get started. We are going to start lying down on our back. And our first exercise is going to be something that I practiced both while I was pregnant and after having Saya. It seems like an incredibly easy abdominal exercise, but it shouldn't be if done properly. So we're going to do some dead bugs. Dead bugs, essentially, you're going to come into, um, so reclining on your back, bending your knees to a 90 degree angle. It's really important to make sure that your knees don't come in this way because you lose a lot of that abdominal engagement. So we want to maintain that 90 degrees. So it's like you're pushing your knees a little bit away from you. And as you push those knees away from you, notice how the lower back starts to press down onto the mat. That's incredibly important. You don't want to be arching your back, which sometimes happens when the knees come in. We want the back lowered and touching our mat. We want to hug the belly in. We're not pushing upwards, but we're actually pulling downwards. The shins are parallel to the ground and our arms are just gonna reach up towards the sky. Now, I have some really nice props around me, so I hope I don't knock anything down. But you're gonna take a lovely inhale and with the exhale, reach your right leg, right arm forward and your left arm back. Again, pay attention to that left knee and do not allow your lower back to come off the ground. I'm already trembling just by doing this. And then we change sides. Now, as you bring the right knee in and the left leg goes long, make sure that that right knee doesn't come in towards your chest. It stays at that 90 degree angle. Keep pulling downwards and we change once again. So trying to make the movements nice, slow, controlled, feeling the engagement, starting to feel that core really fire up as we gently move from the right and the left side. Keep hugging the belly in. Again, it's one of those exercises that you get so annoyed when someone tells you to do because you're like, this is so boring, but you really do feel it when you do it well, when you take it slowly. We continue drawing the left knee in and then allowing the right leg to go long, left arm reaches back behind you. Let's do the left side. And then we're just gonna do one more round on both sides, my core is already really burning. So the right leg goes long, right arm goes long, left arm goes back. We're trying to keep that left knee away from us and then change sides. Keep pulling down, 
bring it back to center and hug those knees into your chest. Woo! Give yourself a little squeeze, gentle rock from side to side. All right, so moving on to some other exercises. Oh my God, no, I forgot one. We're gonna go back to our dead bugs and this is where you're really gonna hate me, but I'm actually glad that we took a break because my core was actually feeling quite sore. So arms up to the sky, knees bent to a 90 degree angle. Now this time, <laughs> and every time it's because I know what's coming. I want you to bring your legs long, your arms overhead, pull the belly downwards and start to paddle arms up and down. So try to move them as quickly or as slowly as feels good to you, but keep that belly pulling downwards, lower back onto the ground for five, four, three, two, and one. Hug your knees into your chest. Ooh. All right, we're only just getting started. So releasing your knees onto the ground this time. Always remembering to pull that belly in to keep the lower back onto the ground. This one's quite easy, but again, I want you to really pay attention to the engagement. We're gonna draw our chin towards our chest, reach our fingertips towards the knees, and start to peel the shoulders up off the ground. And we're just gonna to start to pulse up and down. Pulse, pulse, pulse. It helps sometimes to exhale as you lift up making sure that that exhale's a reminder to draw the belly in and downwards. We keep going for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stay up, bring your hands to the sides. We're gonna tap right ankle, left, right, left, right, left right, left, starting to work those obliques, the side muscles, keep going for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release, knees back into the chest, Give yourself a little break. It's already starting to warm up. All right, guys. So we've done our dead bugs. We've done a little bit with our knees bent. Now I'd like you to reach your legs up towards the sky. Now for some reason, I feel like I used to do this exercise when I was in high school, um, but it's a really, really good exercise for starting to engage those lower muscles. Now a lot of times, the core work that we do is, is really good at, at engaging the upper muscles, which is where you start to see maybe a little bit of muscle formation, but we have that, um, I don't know, if you're like me, I've always got that bulge on the bottom, that sort of little extra love handles, I guess you could call them. But anyways, this is where we're focusing. We're focusing on the lower part of our abdominals. So bring your hands by your side, palms facing down. Again, feel that pull downwards with the belly, that's how you engage the core, engage the, engage the TVA. And we're gonna lower our legs down to a hover and then lift them up. And as you lift them up, just take your hips an inch or two off of the ground. And then we release. We lower the legs down, try to keep that lower back connected, toes up to the sky, little push with the hips, and we lower. Let's keep going for another seven, lower, for six, lower, for five, for four, moving with control, for three, for two, oh, last one. All right, hug your knees in towards your chest, little squeeze, rocks from side to side. Now remember, I'm going one by one with all of these exercises, but if there's any of them that you absolutely love, please feel free to repeat the exercise um, maybe once or twice more, but there is a lot of core work that we're involved, that, we're, that I'm involving into today's class, so we continue. Feet up towards the sky. This time I'd like you to flex your feet, so trying to get your toes to point down towards you. Lovely stretch down the calves, Maybe going a little further down towards the hamstrings. Fingertips are gonna reach up towards those toes. 
Similar dynamic to what we did previously, chin to chest, we peel our shoulders off the ground and we try to tap our toes and lower, tap up and lower, tap and tap. And we keep going for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, I want you to scissor the legs now. So your right leg's gonna go down. You're gonna bring your hands together, palms together, interlace all of the fingers except for the index finger. Peel off the ground, and we're gonna pulse to the left for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, we change sides, bring the legs together and then scissor left leg down, arms to the right and we pulse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release. Hug your knees into your chest. Gentle squeeze, maybe little rocks. All right, from where we are, keep the knees into your chest, keep the right knee in, allow the left leg to go long. Bring your arms towards the sides, nose to knee, and we're gonna hold here and hover for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, knees into your chest, release. All right. The nice thing is we're on our back. We haven't even like turned around. So there's always an advantage to be lying down on your back. It does feel like work, but it feels a little bit easier. Keep the left knee in, right leg goes long. Chin, sorry, lifts up, nose to knee. Hands by your sides and we hold here for 10. Keep pulling the belly down for nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it back. Oh my goodness. All right, guys. This is gonna be the last one, if I'm not mistaken. I've got my notes here because I don't want to forget anything. Yeah, this is gonna be our last one on our back. So similar to what we did before, your legs are up towards the sky, your feet are flexed, your fingers are reaching for your toes. But this time, instead of reaching the fingers upwards, we're gonna reach both the fingers and the hips up. So this shouldn't look like much. You might look at me and be like, she's not actually doing anything. But I really want you to pay attention to lifting the hips up and again, working that lower abdominal wall. So fingers reach up and as we crunch, hips and hands go up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hug your knees in. Okay, so moving on. Don't get too excited because it's still a lot to come. I want you guys to cross uh, at the ankles, bring your hands, actually don't cross at the ankles, just bring your hands underneath your knees, and we're gonna start to rock and roll, forwards and backwards. But as you come forward, challenge yourself to hover the feet off the ground. We inhale, rock back, exhale, hover forward, inhale, rock back, exhale, hover forward. Do that one more time, and then I want you to hold the hover forward and find your boat pose. All right, so this is getting a little more familiar into our yoga practice, Navasana. We're gonna move from Navasana to Ardha Navasana, half boat. So take a breath where you are, and then start to lower, half boat. Squeeze everything into your midline, and lift yourself up. We lower for nine, lift, eight, and lift. Keep it strong, seven, long spine as you lift, Six, lift, five, four, three, two.
two, one. Lift up and rock yourself back. Give yourself a little squeeze. All right, guys, I promise you we're gonna make it into our plank exercises very soon. But we have one more exercise to do that's similar to what we just did. So bring your hands under your knees and let's work on those rock and rolls because it feels really nice on the spine. So take an inhale as you rock back. Exhale to hover forward. Inhale, we rock. Exhale, hover. One last time and then hold in your boat pose. Okay, so I love this exercise. Play with me. We're gonna lower to half boat, reach your arms overhead. As you crunch up, bring your right knee into your chest. Option for the left leg to lower on the ground. And we go back, low boat, left knee in. I know I was gonna start hitting things. Low boat, right knee in, low boat, left knee in. Let's do this. We've got 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Whew, bring it down. Feel free to actually take a full body stretch now that we're on our back because it should feel really nice. I'm going to move us through some cat cows so that we can give ourselves a little stretch as we go through this. Hug your knees into your chest, hands under the knees. Rock and roll a little faster this time. Doing it two or three times and then crossing at the ankles, planting the hands, tabletop position. All right, my lovely yogis, shoulders are over wrists, hips over knees. Make sure the hands are at least shoulder distance, knees are hip distance. I like tucking my toes. I feel like it gives me a little bit more grip as we move through these cat cows. And while I fix my hair, I'll walk you, I'll talk you through it. So on the inhale, I want you to really drop the belly towards the ground. Lift the tailbone, lift the gaze. Squeeze palms backwards so you get a nice stretch through the upper part of your abdominal wall and as you exhale, push the ground away, draw your chin towards your chest and tuck the pelvis. So inhale, we move through our cow pose, gaze goes up, belly down, squeeze the palms back, get a lovely stretch. Exhale, round out through that spine. Chin to chest, we really push the ground away. Inhale, once again, squeeze hands and knees towards one another. Lengthen, drop the belly, lift the gaze, shoulders wrap. So wrap the triceps, shoulders go back, and exhale, really push. Tuck the pelvis, get a nice stretch through the spine. We'll do that two more times. So inhale, lengthen, exhale. Round it out one last time. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, round it out. All right, guys. So again, probably a little more traditional to our yoga practice. You probably do this sometimes in your, in your classes. Toes are tucked. I want you to hover the knees in your tabletop position. Now, where you are, I'm going to lower my knees. Don't lower yours. I want you to really pay attention to hugging the ribs and the belly in. So you've got a nice long spine. We're protracting through the shoulder blades as we push the ground away. Knees hover, squeeze palms and feet towards one another. You might want to walk your feet back ever so slightly for what we're going to do next. We're going to hold here for another three, for two, one. I want you to start to straighten the legs out, coming into your plank position, lift your right foot off the ground. Take an inhale here, exhale knee to nose, push the ground away, round out through the spine. Inhale, hold your plank position, right leg goes long. Exhale, crunch. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, exhale, draw it in. Bring that right leg long, release the right foot, hover your knees. If you need a break, lower the knees down to the ground. It's a lot on the arms, I realize. Otherwise, we're back in that tabletop where we hover for another three for two. Straighten the legs, left leg off the floor. 
Take an inhale, keep hugging the belly in. Exhale, knee to nose, push the ground away. Inhale, go long. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, round it out. Bring it long once again. Release the left foot. Either hover the knees or lower the knees for three, for two. Everybody, lower the knees, join the toes, bring your hips to your heels, and take a very, very well-deserved child's pose. Now, a couple of breaths in your child's pose, and then I'm gonna move you through one of my favorite spinal stretches, which should feel quite nice along the core as well. So just try to slow the breath down, steady it out, come back to the here and the now, Recognizing that that space of our core, that point in our chakras, has a lot to do with our sense of security, um, which for me I always comes back to that sense of self, um, that sense of grounding. So just being really mindful of what we are working on, the significance beyond just the physical. All right, guys, arms reaching forward, hips pulling back towards the heels. I want you to firmly plant the hands down and start to round out through the spine as if you're moving through a cat pose, coming forward into plank with knees on the ground, and then start to drop the hips, really open the chest, squeeze the palms back to get a nice little stretch through that abdominal wall, and then reverse what you just did, leading with the bum. So stick that bum out. As a teacher of mine would say, beyond say that butt, bring it back into child's pose. Now we do the opposite. Michael Jackson, pelvis tucks in, round out through the spine, shift forward, open the heart, squeeze palms back. One last time, bum leads. We come back into our child's pose, round it out. Shift forward, find that nice little stretch in your up dog. And then slowly come back into your table top position. Now, all right, I remember what, <laughs> what I wanted us to do. We're so close to the end, guys. You're doing absolutely fantastic. I know this is full on when it's just core. I want you to come back into your plank position. Now, a lot of these exercises, when we're working in our plank position, the Goal, again, remembering that our core is protecting our spine and it's creating stability, is that by really hugging the belly in, we do our best not to move the pelvis. So I want us to move from our plank position onto our forearms. So we're gonna lower one arm, lower the other, lift up, and the other. Lower forearm, down, lift up, and the other. So try to find the stability, I realize that this is a lot of arm work. So if you wanna just hold a static plank, feel free to do so. Otherwise, this sometimes helps to distract a little bit from what you are doing as you focus on another muscle group. We'll do one more. Hold your plank position when you get there. My mom, <laughs> in her yoga classes, often has us hold our planks and our forearm planks for a minute. I don't have a timer, so I'm gonna hold us here for another, let's count it slow, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, <laughs> lower the knees, Take your child's pose. This time what might feel nice is drawing the knees together, reaching the arms back behind you, releasing your forehead onto the ground. I'm just working to slow that breath down, to find that connection, to congratulate yourself for taking the time to do this for you Connect body, breath, 
sense of self, of achievement. All right, guys, this is the last one, and then I'm gonna do some final stretches. So, again, my arms are burning. That was a tough exercise. My core is burning too, but my arms definitely feel it. This is gonna be a forearm plank. So take it as far as feels good to you. Try to get your forearms parallel to one another. Shoulders are over wrists, slightly leaning back makes it a little bit harder. Legs go long. For this one, open the legs a little wider. So again, we're trying to get that pelvic support so that we're not swaying massively in the hips. Take a breath. All right, guys, right arm reaches forward, bring it back. Left arm reaches forward, bring it back. Right arm forward and back. The more stability in the pelvis, the more you are gonna feel this in your core. We continue. You've got this. One last time, right side. One last time, left side. Hold your forearm plank. Try to make sure that your hips aren't dropping, but they're also not lifting. So we're protracting through the shoulders. Get that nice shoulder stability. Serratus anterior muscles, the ones underneath, kind of right behind your armpits, are fired up to stabilize the shoulders. We draw the core in. If you want, you can even see what it feels like to squeeze those inner thighs, that full body engagement. Hold for three and for two. Release the knees. Whew. Bring it back. Child's pose once again. All right, my fellow yogis, shift your weight forward. Tuck the toes under. Lift the hips. If this is your first downward facing dog of the day, maybe take a moment to pedal it out. It always feels really good here. Move in any way that works for you. Give yourself some little side stretches, bending one knee, bending the other. And then just take your gaze between your hand, purely optional. You can step, hop, or float through to seated. Come back onto your back. Full circle, we haven't even stood up, I love it. All right guys, knees are bent, just counteracting some of the work that we just did. Nothing better than a good bridge or a good back bend to really lengthen out through our core muscles. So if you're focusing on your bridge, drawing your heels close towards your hips, arms go long. Make sure that your feet are hip distance apart. You're pressing your knees. So as you lift up, the knees have a tendency to want to go out. So you're squeezing them inwards, engaging your inner thighs. But most importantly, as we start to lift the hips up, engage those glutes. Make sure that they're turned on and you're lifting the hips, using the glutes and not your lower back. Maybe your arms reach underneath you. You can interlace the fingers, shimmy from shoulder to shoulder if you have a block. Sometimes it can feel really good to place a block underneath your sacrum. Final option, if you're feeling ready for it. One of my teachers used to always call this a shot of coffee. First thing in the morning, you can take your hands either side of your ears and lift up into that full wheel, making sure that you're protecting your lower back. So really engaging the glutes, opening up through the heart space, and then fully stretching out that core. Feels so good. Wherever you are, take one more breath. And then slowly, we release ourselves down, vertebra by vertebra. Take your feet mat distance apart and windshield wipe your knees from side to side to side. All right, my fellow yogis, bring those knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a lovely squeeze. Option to take a few minutes in Shavasana, so coming to Lie down, legs go long, feet fall out, arms to the sides, palms facing up. Or you can finish this video right here and move on to anything else that you might be either working with or working on. I'm gonna allow the video to go dark for a little bit so those of you that are lying down can stay where you are for a few more minutes before our next video starts. Thank you so much for joining me today. This was just day one. I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Day two is all about those glutes. I look forward to seeing you. Bye.